What's up guys, I'm Solis Williams, aka The School Professor here to get you on health and social well-being. Today guys, I want to talk to you about a few issues that I see when it comes to people and their assistance movements, aka their variation work of the main movements trying to get stronger on, as well as their accessory work, which are movements that aren't necessarily variations of the movements trying to get stronger on, but are tools that are still going to help them with getting stronger on their main movements. Now, before we get into that guys, a couple of things. The first thing is in the description box down below, I will have pretty much most, if not every single video that I've done over variation and accessory work going from like, you know, how to decide which variation movements you should do for the big three to how to gauge your RP on your accessory work and why you should gauge your RP on your accessory work and just how to progress these things as a whole. So there's going to be a lot of description box down below for you guys to check out. Um, and for those of you who already have, the second thing I want you guys to keep in mind is that when I'm talking about these topics, when I'm doing these informative videos, the purpose is to speak to the majority, meaning there's always going to be exceptions to what I say. And oftentimes in my videos, I will point out what those exceptions are but it's one of those things you guys have to understand when i'm speaking about these things i'm talking on a very general sense because i'm t speaking to a collective audience so just keep that in mind so if i say that hey most of you guys probably don't want to do a b or c keep in mind that if you are that exception where you have a very specific reason for doing a b or c or your coach has a very specific reason for having you do a b or c it's cool man do you don't take no offense i'm just here to help you guys out all right now with that being said let's get right into it So the first issue that I see a lot of people having when it comes to their um, assistance movements, aka their variation work, is that they are doing far too much of it. It's kind of like just mindless variations for mindless amounts of reps with no real rhyme or reason to it. Now, when I'm talking about this, I'm not referring to beginners. Hopefully by now you guys know that if you're a beginner, less is more. You want to go at things as simply as possible. You don't need to be doing a whole bunch of variations of the bench, squat, deadlift, or any movement. You need to be trying to build your base with just a handful of basic movements like, you know, the bench press, squat, deadlift, overhead press, some type of row, and some type of vertical pull, whether we're talking about pull-ups, lat pull-downs, just focusing on those handful of movements and getting stronger on those is going to help you build your overall base. So if you're a beginner, then it should be obvious that you shouldn't be doing an excessive amount of variation work. But what I'm saying is, even for those of you who are intermediate lifters or power lifters where you're in your, your, your off season or if you're a general strength athlete where you just finished the testing phase of your main movements and now you're kind of going into like, you know, your uh, post testing phase, I see far too many of you guys doing way too much variation. We have to keep in mind that when it comes to variations, like I said, the, the proper term for variation movements is assistance movements. The purpose of these assistance movements is to assist us with getting stronger on the main movements that we're focused on. Since I'm a power lifter, we're gonna use the bench squat and deadlift for most of our examples here. So for me, if I know my main priority is to get stronger on the bench, squat, and deadlift, then even if I'm in my off season, everything I should be doing should be for the benefit and purpose of helping me with that. So if I get to a point where I'm in my off season and my block has no semblance of the actual comp specific work, it's nothing but variations, especially if it's variations that aren't even close to comp specific work, that's a problem. Now, it's one thing if you decide that you kind of like, you know, you want to kind of get away from the comp specific movements just for psychological reasons, like you just want to take a break from it. But at that point, that is not an off season for powerlifting or an off season for those movements, you are taking a break from those movements as a whole. Because the purpose of the off season is to build yourself up and prepare you for when you're back in season. It's kind of like a football player, right? Even though when they're in their off seasons, they may be doing different things um, that are a little bit different than when they're in season, they're still doing things that are going to help them be better football players. It, it, like the idea of, okay, I'm just gonna like get rid of football and just play basketball only my off season as a football player doesn't work. Just because they both involve a ball doesn't mean that that's gonna be good carryover or be a good off season for when they go back to football. So it's the same thing here. Just because you're doing a variation of the big three that's a barbell movement, if that's all you're focused on, it doesn't mean that's going to set you up to be better when you go back to the comp specific lift. So, uh, for example, let's say you squat three times a week and, and, and you're doing something like, okay, you've got front squats one day, high bar squats another day, and then uh, safety squat bars another day. That is makes no sense at all. It's not going to be beneficial for you because you're not working on the comp specific movement at all. So you're going to get detrained from that movement if you're getting stronger on these variations. Now, Mind you, it's okay if you're working on a closer variation. Let's say on your primary day, you're doing something like a paw squat or a tempo squat, which is very obviously very similar to what your comp squat's gonna be, except for it's gonna be a little bit slower into the hole, or you're going to pause in the hole. That's fine if you're doing that for your, um, for your like primary squat day. But even then, I would still recommend that on that secondary squat day, even if it's like for volume higher reps, that you still come in and just do the comp specific movement. And then if you have another variation on your tertiary day, that's fine. But it's keeping in mind that when it comes to assistance movements, the main two things that we're looking at, guys, is 
trying to work on some type of technical issue that we may have in the conspecific movement, which first and foremost, you should try to fix that technical issue with the movement itself just through queuing. But if you realize that you can't do that, then it's okay if you're using a variation. Once again, maybe I'm working on the pause squat to focus on um, keeping proper tension in and coming out of the hole. That totally makes sense. Um, and then another reason why we do assistance movements is to help prevent overuse injuries when you're maybe you know maybe you maybe you can't comp squat three times a week maybe it's like okay when i get in the lower position more than twice a week it starts to really wear on my shoulder so you do you do high bar on that third day out of the week because you can still handle a little bit more squat volume it's just you got to get some of that pressure off your back and your shoulders so you do high bar that makes sense however if you're going into you know your off season or your post you know your post meet training and you feel good and you feel healthy you realize that okay some of these technical issues i have i can work just by cueing them with the conspecific movement or hey yo i don't really feel all that beat up so i don't need quite as much variation work to prevent overuse injury then be as specific as what you can even in your off season because keep in mind the best way you're going to get better at the low bar squat is to low bar squat the best way you're going to get better at the comp bench press is to do your usual comp bench press the best way you're going to get better at conventional deadlift if you're a conventional puller is to do conventional if you're a sumo puller is to do sumo so i'm not by any means anti-variation any of you have been with this channel long enough who watch my training know it's not the case but it's understanding that the purpose of what i'm doing for example as a power lifter is to get stronger on the bench squat and deadlift that i'm doing on the platform so even in my off season i still need to be trying to be as specific as possible with those movements it's keeping in mind that variation movements are a tool and it's knowing when and how to properly utilize them it's not about oh i'm in my off season so let me just do as much mileage variation as possible it has to make sense for what my actual goals are so that's the thing a lot of people in my opinion are doing way more variation work than what they actually need to only because they feel like they're supposed to be doing that right now but once again you want to be as specific as possible towards your goal so even when it comes to which variations you pick it needs to make sense right like there's, there's more often than not doing like a high bar squat is probably going to make a whole lot more sense of variation than doing a front squat because it's simply going to have better carryover to your low bar squats. Not to say there's never going to be a reason for you to do front squats, but it's just knowing like, okay, what variation am I doing and why am I doing this? And do I even need to be doing a variation right now or can I get away with being a little bit more comp specific even when I'm further out for the meet? So that's the first thing I kind of want to cover is just kind of the general like idea of like variation and assistance movements and understanding that off season doesn't just equal do as much variation as possible because that's just not the case. Now, number, the second thing I wanted to get into guys was accessory work. Now, what's funny enough is while I feel like a lot of people do oftentimes too much variation work in their off season, I feel like a lot of you don't do enough accessory work or don't put enough emphasis on your accessory work in your off season. Now, a lot of, and usually the people who do this are falling on the opposite end of the spectrum. Like the people who are doing a lot of variation work are kind of like those people where it's like, oh, as much variation as possible. Whereas the people who tend to kind of stay away from accessory work have the mindset of, oh, I gotta be as comp specific as possible all year round. If it doesn't have anything to do with the squat, bench, or deadlift, I don't wanna do it, I don't wanna touch it, which is really just shortchanging yourself in the long run. Because even though, yes, we wanna be specific with the bench, squat, and deadlift, keep in mind, we already know, if you've been on the channel, you know already, relative to the individual, a bigger muscle is a stronger muscle. And what our accessory movements allow us to do, even though they're not variations of the big three, is to overall just get more jacked, put on more muscle without screwing with our recovery. Because at the end of the day, for most of us, as we get bigger and as we get stronger, we're doing more total workload, you can only squat so much before your recovery starts taking a hit. You can only bench so much before your recovery starts taking a hit. You can only deadlift so much before your recovery starts taking a hit. So doing these accessory movements to help put a greater emphasis on hypertrophy and getting as jacked and strong as possible is going to help you in the long run because as you get those muscles that are involved in the big three bigger, your legs, your chest, your triceps, your back, that's going to benefit you with those movements. And this is especially true when we think about the fact that some of our muscles just aren't gonna be maximized with the big three alone. Even though squat, bench, and deadlift do cover a vast majority of the muscle groups that we're trying to get bigger and stronger, the reality is, is you're not gonna maximize your back growth with just deadlifts. Yes, deadlifts are gonna work the lats, but you need to be doing some type of row. You need to be doing some type of vertical pulling, especially when we consider a lot in powerlifting that nowadays a lot of it is just about what? Lifting as much weight as possible, right? Which I'm not knocking, but the reality is, is you're gonna see a lot of people manipulating their leverages. Really wide um, squat stance, max grip sumo stance, um, max grip bench press with trying to emphasize as much arch as possible, which once again, I'm not dogging. The purpose of powerlifting is trying to lift as much weight as possible point A to point B, but because a lot of this involves shortening your range of motion, that means that the muscles are getting even less work than what they would otherwise, which is why it's even more important that we have good accessory work, doing things like you know, um, flat dumbbell press, weighted dips, 
pull-ups, um, belt squats, leg press, things where we're going to actually be focusing on building these muscles up from the standpoint of hypertrophy through a longer range of motion. That's very important. And the mistake I often see people make is they kind of treat their accessory work the same all year round, if they're even doing any accessory work. Obviously, the first, the first thing is to actually make sure that we're doing accessory work, right? But what I mean by that is, obviously, as we get closer to a meet, the emphasis on accessory work is usually going to be less. Why? Because we only have so much recovery, right? You have to think of your like your overall recovery as like kind of a resource. You only have so much resources to give. Usually when we're closer to a meet, we're doing way more volume and way more total heavy workload on the big three. We only have so much recovery to give, so we might have to pull back a little bit on the accessory work. But when you're further out from a meet, and you tend to either, do, like a lot of us will throw out for meat for work, you tend to be eating more because we can afford to be a little bit further away from our weight class, we can get a surplus, as well as the fact that maybe you're just not doing quite as much volume or going quite as heavy as what you would be when you're closer to a meet. So that's the time where you can be pushing your accessory work more, focusing on your bigger accessory movements. Like I said, things like weighted dips, uh, incline barbell press, pin lay rows, weighted pull-ups, and on top of doing these movements, actually making sure that you're tracking your progression on these, that you're actually progressively overloading and getting stronger with these movements over time. Because once again, you you should be trying to get as jacked as possible between meets. Like every time you sit back on the platform, especially if you're, you know, maybe you're doing like two meets a year, like every six months, you should want to be a little bit bigger muscularly every time you get on the platform because that's only going to benefit you. Now, that kind of leads me into point three, which is kind of like, periodizing all this stuff together, right? It's understanding that for one, a lot of this stuff is on a spectrum. Once again, off season doesn't automatically equal just as much variation as possible, get away from the count specific work. But at the same time, being close to a meet doesn't equal, oh, you can't have any variation work at all. It's all on a spectrum. Once again, you might be somebody where you simply can't handle doing um, comp specific low bar squatting three times a week. So maybe your third day of the week is always a high bar. That's okay. It's better if you can get in some of that additional volume and in a very similar movement pattern than to not squat at all, right? So that's fine. So even if you're four weeks out from a meet, maybe you'll never be someone who's um, squatting, who's comp squatting three times a week. You, once again, may be very far out from a meet, but you're getting away with still doing comp squatting two, three times a week, just maybe with more overall volume because you feel good and you feel healthy and it's all about where you are and that's fine. So it's understanding when it comes to variation work, it's kind of a spectrum. Just know what you're doing and why. As for the accessory work, the way that I think it's good to periodize it is to periodize it in a similar fashion to however you're doing your main movement. So in the off season, for example, what I like to do is for each block, which my blocks are usually in four weeks, I'll start with a certain amount of weight on my accessory movement, right? So let's just say for pin lay rows, I start with 180 pounds, week one, then week two, 190 pounds, week three, 200 pounds, week four, 210 pounds, cool. Then at the start of the next block, I'll scale that back, but I'll just start a little bit heavier than what I did before. So instead of starting with 180 pounds, maybe I start with 190 pounds. So that way by the end of the block, I'll end with 220 pounds. And this is a good way of making sure that I'm periodizing my accessory work to where I am progressing on it and getting growth from it, but I'm not doing so much with it to where it is impeding on my work with the big three. Cause that's the issue that a lot of people have. They feel like, well, if you push your accessory work too much, then it's gonna put on your progress with the big three, which is why so many people are very like selective with what accessory movements they do or they don't need, do any accessory work at all. And it's just understanding that you periodize this stuff as neat as you get closer to a meet. For example, as you get closer to a meet, you're probably gonna do less workload on big movements like weighted pull-ups or barbell overhead press. You might even just switch those movements out as a whole. Like me, when I get closer to a meet, I'm usually not doing weighted pull-ups. I'll either just do body weight pull-ups or lat pull-down. I'm probably not doing pin lay rows. I'm probably just doing something like a chest supporter row or seated cable row. I'm probably doing no barbell overhead press, maybe just um, you know, some, some light body weight dips or some dumbbell shoulder overhead press. I'm doing movements that all as a whole just aren't going to beat me up as much and take away from my recovery as much because once again, you're closer to a meet. So it makes sense to be more focused on the big three right then and there. But it's understanding that if you keep that mindset all year round, you're ultimately shortchanging the total amount of muscle you can build and therefore shortchanging the total amount of weight you're going to be lift able to lift on the platform because even though these accessory movements don't quote unquote have direct carryover, they're getting the muscles involved bigger that we use with the big three. Bigger muscle, stronger muscle because you can produce more total force, right? So that's kind of like the rundown of what I see people doing wrong when it comes to like their their assistance movements and their accessory work. It's it's like, it, you can't be mindless with this stuff. Don't be that guy who's just doing a crap load of variation work and a bunch of accessory work, but isn't periodizing it in any way, shape or form to where the progression makes sense. But at the same time, don't be the person who feels like you just have to bench, squat, and deadlift only, super high volume all year round. And everything I'm talking about applies to, to even general strength athletes. Maybe your main focus isn't the bench, squat, and deadlift. Maybe it's the weighted dip, weighted pull up, 
and you know, um, <laughs> rack pull boom, boom, below the knee, God forbid, or something like that, right? But the reality is, is it's still the same concepts. You wanna make sure that if your main goal is, hey, I'm trying to get stronger on these handful of movements, then your assistance works and needs to make sense for promoting your improvement with those movements. And you need to do accessory work that's gonna help the muscles get bigger that involve with those movements. And that's pretty much the basic breakdown, guys. That's the biggest thing that I see a lot of people do wrong when it comes to their off season or their post um, strength testing. It's just finding this proper balance between how much variation work to do, if any at all, and then actually trying to maximize their growth potential with their accessory work. But yeah, that's pretty much it for the video, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, go ahead and comment down below. Let me know what you did. If you're not, leave a comment down below. Let me know what can be better. Like the video, share, subscribe. Keep it simple, specific, scientific. I'll catch you guys later.